I'd like to show you how to set up a cathode ray tube. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. This one is a diffraction tube, which is used for showing e um, electron diffraction. Uh, there's Maltese crosses, there's Perrin tubes, and there are deflection tubes. But they all essentially have the same setup. So I never knew how to set these up, and I used to search quite a lot um, just for a video on how to set up. So I'm going to try and be as quick as possible. Helen Pollard from the IOP has drawn this diagram, which you can kind of pause, pause the video and work off. Um, and I'll just show you how to set up the kind of um, the cables therein and don't forget to follow the safety rules that she's given there also it's a good idea to be looking up obviously clear apps and do your own risk assessment before that you do these things <laughs> this stand is probably the most uh, kind of frightening part of this assembly I think it looks like it's really technical but it's, not. it's literally just a stand for that start these sliders back where they are Okay, so that you can just kind of pop your tube into place like so and then collars towards the end means that it's not going to jump out at anyone. Okay so we're clearly going to need our EHT, it goes from about 0 to about 7 kilovolts. Okay, so high tension supply, extra high tension supply to call the EHT. Um, and it's got a feature that should really be interesting and important to you, which is that it, it always goes through a 50 mega ohm resistor. So you're quite safe really, you're never going to get a very high current from these things. But still, we, you would get a jolt, I've had a jolt myself, and you want to keep these away from kids. First thing to do, I think, is to plug in the cathode, which is the most important part probably of the whole shebang. So I'm going to start with that. We're going to use sheafed cables. Okay, so cables where there are no exposed electrical contacts. I'm going to use a black wire because, well, black is negative in my eyes if it's not blue. And on the back of there, there is a negative port. There's a little minus in a, in a circle, which you need to look out for, which is a negative port. Then the next thing to do would be the the anode and the anode is positive so I'm going to use a red one. You can in this case just use one of the sheathed wires from the first port there is absolutely fine to the anode just there. Um, the anode in this case there's only one kind of connector that's pretty obvious there. This is then Make sure you do this. This is the earth wire there. Earth port is green. You could use a green wire, but I wanted to use these thicker, less exposed wires for in this case. And the last thing to do is to connect the AC section, which you can see is just here. So it doesn't really matter which way around these go, but I'm just going to go black into black. And this one. And then, of course, red into the other one. We're going to need to use a piggyback and three mil connector for the final part there. That should be everything absolutely fine. Turn it on, always starting it from zero volts. Increase the potential difference gradually until you hopefully see that green spot appear on the screen which shows you that it's working. Power it down as well in the same way, gradually and turn it off and everything's fine. Here's the diagram which Helen from the IOP drew for us. Um, we'll keep it in the box with the tubes so that anyone who comes along can see how to actually connect it up. It does look a little bit confusing but really it's really quite clear. So take your time, pause the video if you want to. This is my anode, okay, so that's the positive side, that's the red side. This is my cathode which goes in the negative port on the back of the tube. They're the most important ones to get right and then AC to the two connectors on the back of the tube. That is less uh, risky because that's only a six volt power supply, six volt AC for there. Do not forget the earth wire um, just in case so that there's a sink for the charge. Contingencies or safeties, um, always check the negative side on the tube so don't get your cathode in the wrong side. Always have your earth connected, 
always use the safety leads, which are these chunky ones. You can tell they're safety because they're, they're encased in plastic, they're sheathed leads. There's no bare connections that anyone can get their fingers in at all. And always start the EHT from the zero volt setting. Make sure the dial is powered right down whenever you start the EHT. Here's the tube, it's a diffraction tube, which means there's a small graphite target in there. So I've shown you this one, it's probably the, the least complicated looking one. There's no funny connections on here. I haven't got any Helmholtz coils or anything. This is probably good enough if you're a physics teacher or you just want to get out an electron gun and show your class what they see, they're seeing in those pictures. Um, got our fermionic emission in here, accelerating voltage to the anode and then this fluorescent screen on the side there. So don't worry when you're setting up about what's in here, just make sure you can get the first bit right. On the back, you can see, hopefully, only two ports that matter. Hopefully you can see that the top one in this case has got a small round minus. It might not be the top one because of course if you put it in the wrong way around, then it's gonna be on the bottom. I think we should put it in that way. Well, that says tell. These are Teletron tubes, so the people who made them so that's probably the right way up, but it doesn't really matter. Also, don't panic if it doesn't come on straight away. I think sometimes they do take a little bit of time to warm up. So dial it up, especially if it's been sitting off for a while. It may take just a little while, at about 6,000, 5,000, 6,000 volts for it to come on the first time. So the beam of electrons is coming from our fermionic emission there, accelerated here and through to our screen. Can't see it, it's not fluorescing anything in the vacuum of the chamber, but it is fluorescing on this screen here. But hang on, how do we know this isn't just light? Well, light is not deflected by a magnet. So if I bring a magnet close to the beam, you can see that I'm deflecting that. 